to the Celestial Invitational IMD2. With me is Kaldi. We are bringing the English cast to you guys. That is not us on the screen, in case you were wondering. And we are down to our final match of the day. Clento can finally go to sleep. And uh, after this last match, you can too, Kaldi. I know you uh, woke up at a crazy time for this. I myself made uh, the bad choice of not preparing any food between the breaks, so also kind of suffering here at the same time. So uh, those are our excuses, but you have none. You have to watch this last match because it is super exciting. It's going to be Tom versus Shadowy for a place in the finals, as you see Tom on the screen there. And uh, I've done the math, and Kalento is guaranteed to be second place. So the winner of this will be first, and the loser will be third, but that all doesn't matter because it all matters who goes to the finals, and it's only the top two players. Looking at Tom's decks, it is going to be a uh, Control Warrior, a Reno uh, Warlock, and lastly control going to be priest, Control yeah. Priest. So uh, with the Mind Control and a Justicar. So yeah, pretty interesting decks from Tom. Going to be a pretty long day. Was hoping for some aggro to get us through this day, but uh, Tom wants to make us stay here as long as possible with these Control decks. And uh, we will see what comes out of Shadowy here. He is playing Hunter, Warlock, and Shaman. So maybe we might see some aggro decks out of him. And uh, as you see on the screen there, no, he, uh, he is teamless. All right, let's take a look at these decks. It is going to be the Face Hunter. Uh, looking at that Warlock, it's going to... Be... Hobgoblin Zoo. Wow. Wow. Okay, Hobgoblin Demon Zoo it is. <laughs> Can this work? Right. <laughs> And lastly, going to be an aggressive shaman, which tops out at uh, Azure Drake and has the, uh, let's get the Tuscar Totemic in there as well. So pretty similar to what we saw yesterday from Fualiver. So yeah, looks like three aggressive decks versus three control decks to see who can advance out of this group in first place and who will be left, uh, sadly, being in third place uh, with Chao Shen here. But uh, yeah, we will see what happens. Uh, what do you? Who do you think has the edge here? I tend to lean toward Tom because uh, has all the options here to be able to mitigate the damage from uh, the aggressive decks of Shadowy. I have to agree with you. Yeah, Tom's deck seem anti aggro, and, and then we have Shadowy with a heavy aggro lineup. Uh, so it's looking kind of rough for him. I mean, the Shama, for example, is is very very much so all in. Maybe that's how we have to go for it. But I kind of would have. Just like to see a standard mid range shaman and uh, mm. potentially just you know be, be favored against Huntlock Warrior and Druid and then kind of forfeit the rest. Right. Well, we did see that kind of fall flat for Tom earlier when he faced Kalento, although it was a bit of a faster mid range deck, but uh, yeah, it's pretty tough. Shaman, just not the greatest class in the moment, so really hard to put anything together. Looks like Shadowy, looks like he's uh, playing this more as a combo -y deck rather than, you know, all-out aggro. Uh, did decide not to go with either um, the, excuse me, the Voidwalker or the Noitron there. <laughs> gonna keep tapping and gonna make it look like it's, uh, gonna make it look like it's Handlock from Tom's vantage point. I feel like this is probably one of the worst decks against Control Warrior. My, my thought would be that, okay, you play a lot of minions and you just get brought. Right. And I mean, he got has he has two hobgoblins. Is what about something like like a summoning portal? Is that even an option? Wouldn't <laughs> that be cool? You know, uh, yeah, summoning portal along with summoning stone. Just put all the summon stuff in there. But mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tom wondering what to do here. Uh, he could go for that acolyte of pain. It would be a reasonable play, though. He might be wanting to save up some armor to potentially shield slam, you know, a giant or a Twilight Drake, so that's probably on his mind right now because, I mean, thus far it's looking exactly like a handlock deck to him. So yeah, he is going to uh, not go for the Acolyte and going to armor up there. All right, in-game boss comes out for Shadowy. We wonder if we will start seeing him go for uh, playing out his cards here. He is at 9, so he cannot tap anymore. Gonna play the in-game boss out here, and uh, I guess at this point to Tom, he start he might start uh, to think that this deck is uh, Arena Warlock, I believe, from seeing this. What would you think this is after seeing just an in-king boss? It's hard to tell. It could be Mario Lock, could be Dragon Warlock. Uh, generally, so many options. Reno would be the most likely. You know, 
especially seeing what we've been seeing this past, uh, I guess, a week and a half now. But the yeah, no Noid's one. <laughs> yeah. I was no expression at, from Tom, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at Tom's expression and nothing came out, uh, just complete stone-faced. I guess he, uh, you know, has to be com taking this completely seriously, obviously. But, uh, yeah, doesn't have to brawl in hand. Obviously, he wouldn't really want to brawl this regardless. But uh, kind of want to get rid of this Hobgoblin as quickly as possible before, you know, it causes any problems in the future. He does have the bash for that. Um, but uh, do you do you go out of your way to kill this Noitron, or do you just let it sit there? It's problematic. Um, it's actually kind of a tough call. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the super greedy play would to be to go something with like a coin, uh, Sylvanas here, um, or even uh, the Sludge Bolter. But yeah, you kind of have to get rid of that Hobgoblin. And yeah, it looks like he's just going to ignore that Noitron. It, just too much effort to get rid of it right now. It's just, uh, he's fine just leaving it there. As we see the Demon Heart come into the hand of Shadowy. We saw, we saw a Hobgoblin Warlock deck uh, qualify for the APAC Championships. Um, out of the uh, Australia New Zealand region, and I'm I, I mean it was a few months ago, so it's kind of hard to remember exactly uh, if this deck is uh, mimicking that one. But um, yeah, Shadow Way putting on the pressure, making that imp pretty huge. Now uh, likely to see Tom go for that shield, or either the shield slam or the execute. I imagine. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's halfway to control almost because you have double hellfire. I guess the idea is to play nothing, survive, stall, stall, and then overwhelm with Hobgoblin. But, I mean, yeah, if, if he uses the Hobgoblin and plays a, a Void Walker, he gets a Tash It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, that that is kind of the power of the deck, right? And obviously the other side of that is that your opponent probably doesn't have uh, any idea how to deal with this. So, uh, as far as options for Tom is concerned, he can just play out the Savants and play really greedily. Looks like that's going to be what he goes for. Uh, is extremely vulnerable to an Owl, however, as we see the Bane of Doom come into the hand of Shadowy. And uh, as far as Shadowy is concerned, it's uh, pretty, you know, this is pretty threatening as well. Because, in, I mean, if you just start flooding the board, you play the Hobgoblin, Mistress of Pain, and the uh, double... Um, Void Walker, then all of a sudden you're definitely you know vulnerable to that brawl, and Savannah will take whatever you have remaining. It's a difficult decision here for Shadowy, and um, you might just see him go off, uh, and start attacking the face though, because I mean, yeah, just uh, you know attacking in the Savannah just feels too bad, and actually not going to commit anything else to the board. So worried about that brawl, and uh, in a sense, Tom's gamble did pay off. He was able to put the fear into Shadowy that there was a brawl there, even though there wasn't. It seems to be, yeah. I mean, he could potentially see the slam is on Sylvanas after killing the annoyed one. Wouldn't be too bad, he gets a 6-5. Right. I feel like Tom is in the driver's seat here. Uh, one brawl and he'll just be borderline over. He's Shadowy puts everything onto this uh, Hobgoblin here. Yeah, and so it looks like it's going to be... Uh, just drawing some cards with that revenge and going to steal the 6-4, which is pretty good. Now he's putting the onus on Shadowy to be able to deal with that. Develops the fireworks as well. Not even afraid, just not even going to armor up. Has plenty of armor in his hand. And uh, yeah, basically knows... I mean, look at Tov. He's just uh, he, he's just so stoic. Just realizes that this is a combo deck... Uh, you know, uh, focus around getting you know annoying boards with that hobgoblin. Not going to be something where he's afraid of dying anytime soon. And uh, the response from Shadowy is going to be that Blood Mage Thanos into the Hellfire has to either play a card or do nothing um, here. He can't tap because he would overdraw. So just going to pass the turn. And Tom probably feels pretty good about this. Can play a Doctor Boom on an empty board. Um, what is he reaching for now? Looks like it's going to be a shield block. Uh, I guess he's a, maybe a little bit afraid of <laughs> some sort of burst damage because he doesn't know exactly what he's going against here, but uh, still a pretty solid play here. Seems to be the case, but the Emperor Thorson is so interesting to me. <laughs> Bane of them as well. I mean, good Bane of them, he may turn this around even. Uh, but seeing, uh, I guess, both. Wait, is he, he going to go for the Hot Golden right now? 
Yeah, I think he realized he's in a bit of trouble. Um, he could die to um, Grom. I guess he wouldn't really die to Grom because there's no real activator here. So maybe uh, this is a bit of a overreaction by Shadowy. Um, because typically in Control War, you don't have, you know, Inner Rage or anything like that. And uh, Although I guess you, there could be Grom coin Taskmaster, but that's maybe playing a little bit too afraid. But it looks like he's just going to, you know, take a risk here that his opponent doesn't have Brawl. I believe this would be a Brawlable board for Tom. I mean after you see the second Hobgoblin come out and all these buffs come down. As it stands, uh, Tom does not have that Brawl. He does have a Geddon. Would that uh, do... It would do a bit of work, actually, that Geddon. It would do a decent amount of work. However, um, he, would need, he wouldn't deal with the uh, Hobgoblin that way. He would have to find some other way to deal with that. So maybe that's not the best option. Otherwise, he can go clearing this uh, piecemeal. Uh, can go with the, uh, the Bash onto the Hobgoblin. And a shield slam onto the, one of the other creatures, and I uh, think that just has to be it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks like it's going to be the option that Tom does indeed go for. And yeah, just gonna do a decent job of clearing. And uh, what's that last card that he picked up? Gonna be second sludge belcher. Yeah. So it just shows uh, how flexible the new control warrior is, right? With that bash, clears a bunch of the board. Doesn't even need the brawl, and uh, all of a sudden he has the board lead again. Bane of Doom seems pretty. Uh... Interesting, and maybe even going for a Hellfire, but Bane of Doom, yeah, we'll, we'll see that Ooh. on the... Yeah, I feel like this would be a good time to do it. I mean, I f he's kind of far behind, if you could think about it. Uh, yeah. I would maybe go for that option. I mean, a random demon is usually better than a few imps here. So... I mean, are you crazy enough, though? The, the couch state is about the same. The board state is about the same. Oh. Uh, the health is about the same, like... Can we say that Shadowy is definitely behind? Um, His quality I, seems seems lower, but you know. Yeah, but I feel like he's kind of running out of options, right? He has uh, Malganus and Draxus. I guess the Draxus is the one thing that could get him back into this game. But uh, other than that, his card quality is much worse than Tom's, I would say. So uh, he, I, I think, yeah, Shadowy. I mean, he's already used his Hobgoblin, or both of his Hobgoblins, and they were both. Uh, dealt with pretty easily. Tom even has two executes remaining. So, I mean, I, I see what you're getting there. I mean, gi giving Shadowy maybe an uh, opportunity to uh, to maybe win this game. But, uh, I mean, I still it, it still could happen, right? He could still find a way to uh, pull out this game. But uh, I think that Tom is definitely in the driver's seat right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very unconventional deck here from Shadowy. And with this board, I mean... Generally, Mali Lock has some sort of crazy combo, but this is just seems to be a Su Su type of deck now. It's Dark Bomb, and if he gets something like Malganis here, or yeah, this is actually going to be Dark huge. If it gets something big, it would be a big deal. Drax, Drax is pretty good. Yeah, Drax this is pretty good here. I mean, that's really annoying for Tom to deal with right now. Um. And, uh, I mean, I would be pretty afraid to play my Alex Shraza as well, because, I mean, you imagine there's probably some sort of big game hunter in, uh, uh, among the other removals in uh, the deck of Shadowy. There is the Evermalgan and Hobgoblin and Neutron, and it's just all mixing together here <laughs> at this point. But, yeah, I mean, is there a realistic scenario that Tom just falls here? I mean... He's had the execute for such a long time, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, he did use the execute last turn to clear out um, the 3 4 uh, Void Walker. But um, in this case. Yeah, I mean, do you just go for the Dr. Boom and pass? I mean, Shadowy. Let's see, Shadowy does have an extra, you know, 4 damage from that Melganis in hand, so he could be pushing for 8, but that wouldn't be enough. Um, but, um, yeah, Tom, if he does go for the Dr. Boom, what would he go for? Outside of that, because he would have some men remaining. Maybe just armor up. Mm -hmm. And so arm, armor up, and then coin into fiery war axe is pretty interesting. And not attacking as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's really out there. Yeah, that's kind of bizarre to me. Um... Obviously, he can Alex Straza and Shield Sand this this coming turn. So I mean, maybe you uh, free up some mana in that situation. But um, hmm. I mean, he might not have the the man or might not have the armor to be able to 
uh, shield slam just coming turn anyway. So, yeah, pretty uh, interesting play by Tom. It, essentially, it was a it was a coin armor up in this situation. And it could be useful as we see the sacrificial pact come into his hand of Shadowy. I guess that's one of his options to be able to just stay alive in certain situations to be able to pull his combo off. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the state of sacrificial path is, is a bit, we've seen that in that state. And, and I actually, for, for a day or two, when uh, after after the wing one came out, I mean, people were playing so much suit that actually running one was playable. As crazy as that was, but now he can kill. Okay. Hmm. So he's going to give up the chance to just uh, get the Malganus off of that Void Caller. Um, and just gonna play it for the buff because he had no other way to deal with the doctor room. I guess. Wait, 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 wait. He could have just attacked him, like, attack in with the void collar, and you get the Malganus for free. Right. That is true. And you have the requisite damage from the Draxes as well. That's, yeah, that's definitely. That's bizarre. a big misplay, yeah. That's wow. really strange, yeah. That's just a misplay. That's just sadly the scenario. Yeah, and could have played the Doctor Boom as well. I mean, the only thing you can really say is that he was playing around Brawl, but he hasn't. He knows his opponent doesn't have. Oh, uh, that now there's Brawl in the hand, but it wasn't. You, you could get a free. You could get a free tap. Right, right. Why right. not get a free tap? Like, that why, why not go for the heal buff? Like, wow. Now you're in a really tough spot. We have to uh, definitely mention. I mean, uh, we. Uh, Kaldi and I have been casting all six matches, so it's uh, been a long, tiring day for us, but also pretty tiring for these guys. They've been in the studio for a long time, you know, not, not just playing their matches, but, uh, but you know, observing the matches of the other players as well. So, I mean, I would like to give them the, the benefit of the doubt. Just uh, probably going to be, you know, less stellar play than we saw at the beginning of the day. But, I mean, that's what's supposed to separate the uh, the... I guess the amateurs from the pros and the pros from the amateurs, you know, about not giving into fatigue and, and falling through here when it right. matters the most. But he's going to tap. I feel like Hillbot is a losing play. Yeah, it looks like Shadowy is on, it's just kind of um, a losing giving. it a bit here. He's, uh, I mean, just looking at his posture, he's kind of. Um, uh, <laughs> Just having a hard time, you know, being able to concentrate and make uh, solid plays here, but uh, is hanging in there in this game. And Tom picks up a really big card here in that Justicar card, True Heart, just to be able to stay alive. And uh, I mean, it's it's just really hard to kill a warlock when uh, they get that Justicar card in play. Or sorry, not a warlock, a warrior. Excuse me. But yeah, going to be extra six armor this turn, gained by Tom and uh, Shadowy again with his hand on his forehead, wondering how he's ever going to be able to kill Tom in this situation. Um, any sort of fatigue. Well, there is a big game hunter to eventually deal with Alex Straza, but uh, obviously not going to be pretty, not going to be useful now very much. I have to remember that this is actually a hobgoblin deck, you know. Uh, but... yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. What about even how firing after the uh, Doctor Boom is down? To hope to kill the uh, fire one. I mean, yeah, I felt like I might have been, have been stronger, but the big game hunter tactic. What is this? If you're Tom here, do you even use the big game hunter? Because what if? I mean, uh, maybe your opponent has some last creature that uh, you know would be difficult to deal with, and then you just clear with your your face and the uh, shield maiden and then Alex Raza. But I guess you know putting pressure on is pretty good as well, uh, just to uh, put the clock on your opponent. There's Jarax. It's uh, pretty late here. Uh, Boombot does not kill the big game hunter, but does provide the one damage, and yeah, Shadowy definitely on his last legs this game. I mean, is this over though? There's a Tyraxis, he has the big game hunter no, for the... that is true. Okay, but the second brawl I think is uh, is very important here, because Tyraxis comes on the board, potentially, most likely this turn. And die. I mean, I mean he gets killed. The... Yeah, I, I think the second brawl... I think the second ball would be pretty important here, just because you get to brawl the board of six sixes, then you brawl the second board of six sixes, and then eventually Shadowy just fatigues to death. I think there's the the series awakens, which is probably the best card you can have here. Am I crazy? Are they playing a little bit too fast? I mean, last turn was it was that obvious to not use the defender of Arcus? Was it that obvious not to tap? I felt like tapping would have been viable. I mean, right. 
He's just blazing through here. Yeah, I suppose he wanted to save the Defender of Argus for uh, those Infernals that are coming up. But uh, it's going to be the Asterius Awakening. Is this so obvious? Like, <laughs> I mean, the, the, Asterius I'm, I'm, yeah, like... the Asterius Awakens won't kill the, the Infernals, so I suppose this is fine. And you're putting a lot of pressure on your opponent. But you're right, they are, they are playing pretty fast. And um, yeah, but there's a lot of pressure on Shadow here. I think this is this might be the beginning of the end right now. Yeah. Second second awakens comes in the end. That's actually pretty huge. All right, second to last card here for Shadowy, and um, yeah, definitely not looking too good for him. I don't think he's going to be able to build a board of six sixes quickly enough to win this game. And uh, is he? Well, he's dead to the awakens. Yeah, he's just he's dead to the awakens itself, I believe. Oh no, he isn't. I'm sorry. Oh, he stays alive. We have to come down here. I oh think, yeah, the, the uh, sacrificial getting... pack. I'm sorry, sacrificial pack. I forgot about that card. <laughs> Able to use that I mean, one if... one ones. Yeah, I think like, even without it, it would have been playable. But it... yeah, I mean, we keep talking about it, but <laughs> how are we winning this? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think he. Can... I think we. I think we need to consider the fact that Shadowy might be pulling this one through. No, I don't think so. Uh, there's. I mean, look. So the uh, the the Ysera attacks here, and then he plays the Acolyte to draw more cards, get some more armor off of this, plays the Awakens, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> look at Shadowy's face, and then he has another Armor Smith as well as an armor. Shadowy has one more card left. He's even going to call well played here. So, yeah, I, that's. Uh, there's no. I. I think there's almost no way. He even picks up the dream for any taunts potentially in the way. There is the void caller, the last card. So, yep, that's going to be it. <laughs> Finally, uh, the the good news. Well, good news for Tom. He's able to take that out. He's one step closer to be able to advance to the final stages. But uh, potentially bad news is we might have to go through an extremely long match again like that because. Um, Tom has two more control decks, and we might see that Hobgoblin Warlock just played out once more. Yeah, seems like, I mean, Kendall <laughs> 1 was not not short by any means. This is yeah. a very, very long day here. Do, do you think Shadowy maybe should just play out uh, one of his face decks? I mean, he has two face decks, essentially, in that Hunter and Shaman. Um, I mean, it might be a difficult time for him concentrating here. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough call. I mean, the thing is also, they have been calming down and just, like, doing all their stuff while the other match is going on, so they've had some, some breaks, definitely, uh, throughout the day. I feel like they wouldn't be too fatigued. I mean, Tom, especially, is... is yeah. Uh, well, that's very used to this sort of sort of thing. It goes back to what you were saying, though, right? Um, Tom is more experienced in these types of situations, whereas uh, I feel like Shadowy is definitely feeling fatigued. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In any case, it is going to be the Reno Warlock versus the Face Hunter of Shadowy. He does indeed change decks uh, to something a bit simpler to play. Um, obviously, it requires you know a decent amount of strategy to be to be able to pilot pilot excuse me uh, the Face Hunter deck. But um, overall, not going to be as insane as a Hobgoblin combo deck. And we have seen this once before today, and in that case. Uh, the hunter did win, and Greenlock fell short. But it was a close game, though. Absolutely, really, really close. One more mana back and forth, and it would have completely turned around. But I think I'd kind of like him to keep the armor companion. Maybe that's just me. I mean, what are you mulliganing for? I would have been mulliganing for uh, my scientist. Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely interesting, especially because he has the coin. But uh, I figure you suppose. I figure um, maybe with this uh, face hunter that as long as you get a one drop or maybe a two drop, you're you're fine, and eventually you'll, you'll curve into uh, the right hand. And it looks like it's worked out decently well for him. He has you know one in uh, one drop, one drop on turn one, and then that glaive zook on turn two, as well as that argent horse rider on turn three. So it should be working out pretty well for him. Tom obviously wanting to draw. Uh, the Reno Jackson over everything over everything else in this situation, but uh, looking at his hand, it's looking very uh, hand lucky at the moment. It really is a easy turn now, though. I think this has to be just the Sun Fury. There seems to be no other alternative. 
Yeah, I mean, the Owl doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, it could just, you know, deny a spirit part, but not the best situation here. Uh, obviously, Sun Fury can be used later with the single Molten Diet in the deck. But, um, yeah, definitely, it just, uh, clear, it just uh, contests with the board so well right now. Sure does here. Uh, but now, is he going to trade? That would be so painful, though. Death and the trading and going for face only has one minion left. Now, a bit of an awkward call. Do you go for the Dark Bomb or do you Hero Power? And he has he has Harrison Jones and Reno Jackson. Yeah, I mean, well, with the <laughs> the, the Harrison Jones is kind of funny in this in this uh, at least this class, right? Uh, drawing the cards mm -hmm. instead of you know putting something like an ooze in there, but. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about the Reno Jackson Warlock is that the more you tap, the more likely it is that you draw the Reno Jackson. But obviously, the more you tap, the more you're losing health. So, you know, if you don't draw it, it can be obviously a disaster. But uh, Tom, with another tough decision here, whether or not to tap to go for the Owl or to go for the Dark Bomb. And uh, obviously, if you use a Dark Bomb here, it can be... Uh, a bit of a disaster if your opponent picks up something like an Emerald Companion, rolls out a Huffer. Uh, does it does get the Toss Single for the next turn, so that's pretty nice. And uh, Shadowy does pick up the Emerald Companion as well. Misha comes out of it. Pretty pretty good for him, honestly. Um, Huffer could be easily removed, and uh, Leog doesn't provide enough damage to be really worth it. So in the end, kind of be okay for him. Shadowy, or sorry, Tom goes with the Toss Single. Seems to be an easy uh, guild command here, followed up probably with a Lepinum, but I think in hindsight, yeah, this is probably about the best. Uh, maybe Leo could have been close, but this seems to be yeah, kind of the best uh, possible armor companion to get. Yeah, and Shadowy has his opponent down to 14 health, and this is, this is actually a really big match for, uh, I mean, both of these players, because... Um, you know, if ever it was, if ever Reno is drawn, then it's a uh, one game for Tom, and uh, just by virtue of that, it would seem to be in uh, you know Tom's favor from the beginning. But you know, if Shadow is able to take this win, then that's one unfavored matchup that he will have uh, you know sniped there. And in particular, it's absolutely true. But it's it's looking it's looking yeah really uphill right now. I mean, is he gonna go for the heal part in, in any case? Is he gonna? It wouldn't be that horrible though if he goes for the pattern and does end up getting the uh, model coil, but still, he needs to reno, I think, to save him. Yeah, definitely. Um, however, if you do tap here, you're kind of forced to play Dark Peddler, which doesn't really, uh, doesn't really compete with the board anyway. Mm -hmm. Shadow, we just gonna go ahead and, and uh, use this bow onto the heal, but don't don't want any uh, crazy brewmaster uh, things coming on to the board right now. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's probably correct. I mean, he hasn't done to 10 health if you think about the Lepernom already been procced. Put him down to 7. I guess, yeah, he, he has lethal next turn no matter what, even if there's a board clear, so... Right. Yeah, Shadowy obviously, I mean, that, the 7 damage out of, just out of his hand, or, I mean, without using the board, I should say, is uh, pretty intimidating here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Tom might just be done here. I mean, uh, he if he Hellfires and Dark Bombs to clear the board here, he's pretty much dead. He takes, you know, like you said, uh, the five damage guaranteed from the board, and then he's just uh, he's down to two health on board if he goes for that play. Um, he could play the Harrison Jones to get rid of the weapon, but obviously he's taking. Well, he's just dead actually if he does that, <laughs> unless he picks up Mortal Coil. So, gonna be just Hellfire and Dark Bomb, and uh, he's dead to two damage, which we do see is in Shadowy's hand. And this is gonna be a very big win for Shadowy, uh, considering that he's playing, you know, aggressive decks against, obviously, those three control decks of Tom. Yeah, I mean, we, we've yet to see Reno lock against. Uh, we've been seeing it against, well, we've seen it against one Hunter so far, and both, both of those matches have been very uh, one-sided for the Hunter. Now... Could this be something that would die to also the Shaman and just fall against Aggro? Right, yeah, it's uh, this could be, you know, 
uh, Shadowy's best chance to win is to kind of prey on this Reno Warlock here and just hope that Tom doesn't get the requisite draws. Uh, obviously, Reno can be a bit inconsistent at times because you know, obviously you have to throw you know 30 cards in the deck. And if your win condition is that Reno and you need to have it early in the game, it can cause some problems. We are going to get into that uh, particular matchup with the Aggressive Shaman versus the Reno Warlock. And uh, this time, Tom is a bit of a better hand. Uh, with the zombie chow and that mortal coil, gonna looks like he's gonna get rid of that uh, the sunfear protector. It can be pretty useful, but I suppose uh, he wants to look for something better. In particular, the Reno can just win you the game single-handedly. Yeah, I mean, am I gonna just have to call? I think we're gonna be seeing a Reno versus a hobgoblin <laughs> mirror here. In the last game, I'm I'm predicting this goes to game five, and we'll see Warlock versus Warlock, Hobgoblin <laughs> versus Reno. I mean, what is this? We're we going to be determining a winner of the group with that in mind. Right. Uh, <laughs> that, that is that is a good point. The winner of this will be the winner of the group, guys. Uh, strangely enough, Kalento is fixed in second place. Uh, he can get neither first nor third, no matter what these guys do. And uh, neither can these guys finish in second, is the other side of that. So um, definitely a very important match. As we see the Jeweled Scarab come in the hand of Tom. That would be pretty nice for him to have uh, some options going into turn three. There's two, yeah. And, and this is Shadow. Is he starting to copy? Uh, copy here and also fake out his opponent? We've been Sorry? seeing that a lot out of... Uh, like out of, out of chaos and, you know, fiddling with a card that he can't play. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Just pretending that he wanted to play it. Yeah, I, I doubt that uh, he wants to be Dennis in the face right now with that that uh, lightning bolt. But, uh, yeah, we're going to see the Jewel Scarab. Going to see the options here. And uh, what would you go for here? I guess you just go for the biggest minion in uh, the 4-3 there. I think so, yeah. Man, Doubt is running any pirates, so why not go for the Saboteur? And also a message of the hero power, which might be relevant. Yeah, it could Actually be relevant. likely to be relevant, yeah. Right. And uh, probably the Nomer Gun, not too uh, relevant here. I guess it is It is something, though. It is for health, but yeah, it looks like he's just going to go for the biggest minion possible. As for Shadow here, what do you do? Do you uh, trade or do you start hitting the face? I think you go face, actually. Yeah. yeah. Looks like that's going to be the play for him. It does allow Chom to use that Mortar Coil effectively, though, on one of these creatures though. I guess it would have been, uh, it would have worked anyway. Um, so for Tom, you could play the Saboteur, which um, as we as we see, it won't actually matter because Shadowy does have the uh, Feral Spirit in hand. Could go for the uh, the uh, Senjin Shieldmaster, or also could go for the Defender of Argus, which is okay, but not great here. But uh, definitely a lot of options for Tom. Um, I think I kind of like the Ascendant Shield Master most. What do you think? I do agree, yeah. Um, I mean, could... it's getting slightly out of hand, so he will need to start doing something. Yeah, and that I think that sets up for future turns. Uh, you can Mortal Coil um, afterward onto uh, these guys. But I guess he's a bit afraid of, you know, some sort of, uh, op, you know, response to that. And uh, gonna actually just hit the Zombie Chow in and not the Jeweled Scarab. Uh, Shadowy does have the option to use the Urshock to clear out the Jeweled Scarab um, pretty cleanly, though he would be giving up the opportunity to play those Ferris Spirits. So, again, kind of a diffi difficult decision here for Shadowy. That is true here. Uh, hmm. I mean, I wonder if he knows what Tom is playing, but the Jeweled Scarab in Warlock seems strange. You, I've, I've heard... Um, Good merit for the uh, shaman because you have the hex, you have the uh, power mace, and you have the feral spirit. For example, you could add the, uh, I guess, cast like lightning storm, so it's very flexible. But in, in, what is it, the gang boss that people are looking for out of the warlock, jewel scarab? Hard to tell. Right. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's just another card to put in the deck for that flexibility, obviously. But uh, I think by now Shadowy is pretty certain that this is going to be uh, that Reno Warlock deck, so don't think he's too confused about that situation. I don't, and uh, as far as you know, including the Jeweled Scarab, I wouldn't be. I'm not too uh, surprised that you know Thomas put that in there. It looks like Shadowy's going to get aggressive here and just to Urshock this and go face. Um, does get you know 
Tom down to 20, which is relevant here. And uh, if Tom can't pick up, you know, Reno Jackson at any point, uh, it could be a win for Shadowy. Uh, in the meantime, Dom does have the uh, the Mortal Coil to help him start clearing this board. And imagine he'll start going for that. Oh, he goes for it on the 1-1. One, one. I was thinking he may, might go for it on the um, Feral Spirit, but instead just going to silence it instead. Interesting. But uh, is he going to tap? I feel like you kind of need to tap, don't you? Just have more options. I think so, yeah. I mean, that seems to be the idea behind these decks that aren't quite Sue and aren't quite Huntlock. Mm. You have the card drawn, you kind of play it like a, like a suit type of thing with a lot of flexibility. It's interesting that we're seeing this new type of Warlock. I really like that we're seeing so much flexibility, but does he go face now? I think, I think yeah, we have to trade with the Doomhammer properly. But the main Christian didn't even need to go face. Yeah, pretty... Uh... Painful here to miss four damage to face, but um, I mean, if you maintain a board, it could be difficult for Tom to kind of come back here. And uh, wow, this Harrison Jones is going to be very valuable here. Hopefully, he doesn't, you know, mill the Reno though, and he's going to mill two or so cards. All right, so the imp doesn't need the flame imp, doesn't need Yasera really. So hopefully, he doesn't uh, mill uh, Reno after this, but uh, really. Really risky play by Tom, but I guess, you know, mitigating the damage is pretty important. It is, yeah. Uh, and, and what can Shadow really do here? 16 is not enough without the Doomhammer. I mean, he may be just falling apart. I think he may actually have to go to Flame Tongue. Is that possible? I mean... Yeah, I mean, he could go for something like using the uh, Feral Spirit and the Flame Tongue just to push some damage and make it difficult for his opponent. Uh, you're not too sad, honestly, to see a Hellfire here uh, because obviously your your opponent's hurting himself in doing so. So, um, yeah, I think that might be probably his best play. Just, you know, hit for four here. Play the other Feral Spirit. Just get in the way. Force the Hellfire. Uh, even a Shadow Flame it uses most of the mana. So, I, yeah, I definitely wouldn't trade here. It just feels too... Too wasteful. There's two here. Uh, yeah, they're gonna go to the face and uh, mills the pilot shutter, which is a uh, kind of okay for him, obviously for for Tom. And um, can use the Hellfire here. Can play Hellfire plus Molten plus uh, a Taunt to kind of get away in the way of any Chargers, but uh, will be vulnerable to the potential Crackle plus Lightning Bolt the following turn. Yeah, I think this got really exciting at this point. I mean, there's also the option of just uh, killing one of the dogs with the Harrison Jones, going for the second one with the Dark Bomb, and, uh, and then bomb? ending up with the... Uh, maybe heal bomb, maybe just taunt up. Right. The Molten, I mean... You... Oh, right, right, yeah. You just, uh, yeah, that, I guess that would make sense as well. You don't take the three damage from the from the Hellfire, so yeah. Kill the rightmost doggy, and then use the Dark Bomb on the other one, and then play the Molten plus the Taunt in front of that. So, yeah, it looks like that's the play he's going to go for. Obviously, he wants to attack first, so he doesn't kill off his own Harrison, and then finally going to put the Taunt in front. So, yeah, this this probably was the best play. Um, don't really need to use Hellfire, but there's a second, uh... a second Earthshock. This... Wow, this is actually insane. It's not lethal yet, but it's very, very close. All right, gonna get the lava, lava shock, shock, which is a free, basically a free card here. He can use it. Lava shock's Harrison. Yeah, does he? Wait, hold on. He's moving too fast. Oh, oh no. He could have had lethal. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> he had three mana to. Wow. And it would have been a fifty-fifty. It would have been a 50-50 for lethal right there with the crackle. Poor guy. Been... If he loses like that, wow. wow. There's no reason to be playing that quickly. Oh my goodness. And uh, I wonder what Tom thinks right now. He must be wondering what those two cards are. I mean, if he... Do you suspect it's damage? Because otherwise, what you know, why wouldn't Shadowy go for it? Uh, maybe he thinks it's Lava Burst and Lightning Bolt and Shadowy couldn't play both of them. That could be the case. But uh, Tom has to be wondering what those two cards could possibly be right now. That is true, yeah. Uh, I think he'll boy has to be the scenario, though. He feels like... Alright, yeah, so demon it's going to be the Demon Wrath so that he can clear the board here. 
and then as well as heal bots. Now back up to 14. Uh, Shadowy, gonna have to top deck something here in order to grab lethal. That is, is that enough? Five, no. eight, and then. No, if it rolls a six, yes. If it rolls a six, or, yes, uh, or it gets a spell damage totem. Spell damage totem mm -hmm. is almost guaranteed, I believe. Spell damage totem uh, yeah. is three force lethal after he gets that. So, yeah, no spell damage totem. So he has a one in four chance of getting lethal here. Do you just go for it? I think last turn, though, he may have wanted to uh, just kill the minion, leave the totem, and go eight to face. I feel like you need to go face at some point, but... Why not? Why not go for it? Like, what are you waiting for? Yeah, it looks like he's gonna do it. He's gonna lead with the, uh, with that. And needs to get the six here. One in four chance. Doesn't get it, as we see. The end turn button does turn green. But, uh, that prevents Tom from tap. Well, he could tap after he's hyphen souls, but I imagine he's not going. Oh, there's Reno! Fix up Reno off <laughs> the top. And, uh, that's pretty much game. Shadowy knows he can't win from here. I imagine we're gonna see a concede. Well played comes out. Oh my goodness. That is insane. Even the saboteur. Wow. Finally picks up Reno. Does Tom. That's insane. What a top deck. And that's going to be game. Shadowy falls to Tom in that particular game. Tom takes a 2 1. Two games to one game lead, if I can speak English right now. Uh, pretty hard after all these games. But um, yeah, that's Tom in a really good position right now. With the priest, the control priest against his opponents, shaman and warlock, really looking good for Tom in this situation. It sure is, yeah. Tom up two zero here, a uh, two two one here. Only has the priest left, and I feel like the priest is going to have the upper hand here against the shaman. And again and again, we've been seeing shaman fall, but the priest has to go through the hobgoblin uh, warlock first. Right. Or at all, even, yeah. So, Control Priest versus Hobgoblin. I feel like Control Priest is also going to be quite good. But this Hobgoblin... Uh, Hobgoblin <laughs> Warlock is nothing... Nothing ordinary. Nothing it's it's that, just... Right? Yeah. <laughs> completely bananas, yeah. So, what is Tom looking for here? Obviously, he knows what he's playing against. He saw basically every single card when he played against it before. I think that's why he's looking down right now. He's uh, rubbing his temples, and he's like, What is in this deck again? Let me try to remember. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it gets rid of the Light Bomb. Very smart decision, I think, because normally you think, you know, you need that Light Bomb to be able to clear your opponent's board, but considering that, you know, the Hobgoblin is the main component of the deck, it means that one health, one attack, but it also means higher health, so that, uh, that Light Bomb's not gonna be able to clear the, the, uh, uh, opponent's board, even if you get a crazy Hobgoblin combo off. So yeah, Tom probably going to be looking for that Akanai Soul Priest uh, along with the Circle of Healing to clear. Uh, also keeps the uh, Pyromancer in hand so that he can uh, work some combos that way as well. Uh, doesn't pick any, doesn't pick up any uh, any spells, but uh, he might have a lot of time to work with here, especially because Shadowy might you know take a while to build up his combo. Absolutely. Uh... Wow, just doesn't even dark bomb that that pyromancer. Very interesting. I'm surprised why not? Honestly, yeah, that seemed hmm. kind of a given. Okay, it looks like he just wanted to go for the uh, the coin into the implosion, but only gets the two, which is obviously again. Not what's that? I still like the dark bomb. I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I just yeah. Alright, so Tom just gonna play out this Akane Soul Priest. Obviously, uh, the Akane Circle is a huge combo, but doesn't want to give up tempo here, and uh, thinks that he can, you know, make things happen with the minions in hand. He said it was looking good though. Yeah, I don't mind his position. There's, uh, there's so much stuff that he has in the hand. And... Yeah, obviously he has a lot of options to work with here, but uh, Tom gonna keep on the pressure, which is. You know, not typical, obviously, for a control priest. But, um, you know, just going to do what he can to uh, make Shadow respond rather than playing out his own minions with that Hobgoblin. What can Shadow we do here? Obviously, playing out the uh, Hobgoblin into the Mistress of Pain wouldn't be too great. Um, he could play the Noitron just to get in the way and just hope that, you know, his Hobgoblin can stick. Um, that can't really do much else, so yeah, looks like he's just gonna go for that, uh, despite it being really risky, 
And uh, I imagine Tom's just going to steal this Hobgoblin right away. What are, I'm kind of interested to see Shadowy's expression that Hobgoblin just told yeah. him he is just really emotional right now. If you're Tom here, do you attack into this uh, Divine Shield? I guess I guess not. You make it too uh, vulnerable to uh, retaliation on the other side. Shadowy does pick up the Hellfire, which will clear most of the board, uh, but not all of it. And it's true here. Hmm. His other options, I mean, not really looking at too much here. I mean, the the you know Demon Hearts can help start clearing this board, clearing some of the more you know difficult to deal with creatures. <coughs> Defender of the Argus doesn't really do much either. Yeah, this is kind of the problem with this deck, uh, to be honest. Just uh, sometimes you get in this position where you know you have to have all the cards synergized perfectly, or else uh, everything just seems awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Owl is at least something, but it doesn't really have to fear, I think, the Hobgoblin, because there's almost yeah. no priest minions with one health, except I can only think of the North Shire Cleric right off the bat here. Yeah, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a priest stealing a mad scientist, right? It's not... It's, they're only stealing it because it's valuable to you, not because, mm -hmm. uh, not because they actually want it. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's a good analogy. Uh, but now... Sylvanas, the right call here. I mean, I can't. He's, he's seen so many big minions come out of the warlock that Walton has to be saved. I think. Right. Uh, I mean, in that same in that uh, same vein, you know, maybe you save the Sylvanas to deal with bigger creatures. But I imagine he has enough answers overall in the deck. Um, doesn't have a really clear, you know, cleanup of this board on the side of Shadowy, but not like not really necessary that he needs to do so. Um, so it could be something like another Sludge Belcher, because he just saw that his opponent had a tough time dealing with it. And then just heal your own Sludge Belcher. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when this goes on, I think this is mm -hmm. bound to be a big AoE turn sooner or later, where the right. Priest pulls way ahead. And, and is Tom, I mean, that would mean that of the uh, six players so far in the top eight, Five of them would be invite players. I know, that would be pretty crazy, obviously. Uh, so Shadowy, he's going to go for this play uh, to clear most of the board with the Hellfire. Um, Tom, I was going to mention in the last play, he's uh, it's kind of been his MO to play super aggressively and uh, kind of worry about the consequences later. Um, but, uh, I mean, kind of, it burned him a bit there, but he still has first play and he's still looking to be in an okay shape. And uh, even gets to you know put on the pressure with this Lila Naru, and it looks like he's hitting the face, I believe. Yeah, gonna hit the face, gonna put the pressure on Shadowy to uh, come up with something. Obviously, it's hard for Shadowy to you know pull off his combos while healing himself at the same time. That's uh, one of the obviously weaknesses of this deck. Doesn't have the uh, huge swing turns that something like the Handlock could possibly have. It does, but he also has seen the Demon Heart. Right. So leaving a demon. Necessarily in the board. I mean, maybe he's, if he's more afraid of the demon hunt coming down on the one one, but still, it's a bit painful. Yeah. Now we get the Northshire on top of this. This is just, yeah, right. looking so good for Dom. Yeah. Do you go for uh, the Northshire plus the Holy Nova here? I think you do. Also, is there some sort of outside the box kind of RNG lethal here using the Holy Nova and your Light Warden? Uh, I suppose not, but uh, <laughs> okay. So this is definitely Tom, Tom's mo. He just uh, just gonna go hit the face here, and be super aggressive. Looks like he was actually just two damage. Actually, was that lethal? No, he had to uh, survive the boom bots, which I guess he didn't want to brave that. So he could have healed his face and gone for a holy nova, and then the light bo light warden would have gotten big enough to potentially have lethal there. But uh, if the light warden dies to the boom bots, he doesn't get it. So. It's true here. Uh, Shadowy playing fast again. Yeah, with his tournament life on the line, uh, I definitely agree with you. I would like to see him slow down a bit. I mean, is he going to give him... Well, so He's not going to give away the... Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the Savannahs can only take the 1-1 at this point. But... So that is it's getting close, yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, it is, it is pretty close here, but, uh, what do you, I mean, I guess what do you do if you're Tom in this situation? Um, wait, what is he, what kind of... He can clear, is? yeah, he, yeah, he can clear. Right, 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 yeah. So I guess let's put the maximum pressure on the opponent, and, uh, yeah, now Shadowy is on the back foot. Really interesting play by Tom there, it's just to, uh, put more pressure on them. Again, that's been what Tom has been doing all tournament, or all day, I should say. Yeah. But this does clear, right? No, Sorry? it's... Yeah, it, it, he can clear. <laughs> he can actually clear this. Using... Go heal bot, heal bot, hellfire. Then he can mortal coil the 4-4 and attack into the Sylvanas. Would be a 3 health. He doesn't see it. Right. I mean, the, the he also... missed it. The also other play would have been the Demon Heart and use the uh, heal bot, but um, yeah, this could, wow. Okay, this is he very interesting. It. He had it. He could have yeah, Hellfire, Hellfire <sighs> attacking the Sylvanas after heal bot. Yeah, but now he di he dies if he goes for that combo. He had it. Wow. Well, at, at the very least, he isn't dead at the moment, and he can potentially use this Demon Heart on the uh, Mysterious of, or the uh, Mistress of Pain to gain health next turn. Assuming he doesn't die right now, what is Tom's top deck? It is a Shadower Death, which um, he could use on his own Sylvanas to steal something potentially. Could use on that Infernal and just keep the pressure on. Um, it's a lot of... yeah... A lot of options here. It looks like he's just going to use the death on the um, the infernal there and uh, prevent any sort of crazy demon heart plays uh, from the mistress of pain to gain him some health back. And uh, could this game finally be over? Shadowy picks up Malganus. Will that save him? Uh, I don't believe so because he can just uh, steal with the Sylvanas and then uh, use the um, holy champion. No, it, it, it does save him. It does save him. Does it? Yeah, he can kill the Holy Champion oh, right, with right, the right, weapon, right. And, and, and then he is three off lethal. Oh, right, yeah. So, well, if he kills the Holy Champion with the weapon, then Sylvanas, he goes down to two, right? And then the... Three, uh... three, I think, yeah. Oh, wait, he's at seven right now, though. Yeah, yeah. And then the Sylvanas just steals the Malganus, and then the Cabal just goes into the face. Okay. Yeah, he so he goes down to three. Yeah. Oh, right, right, okay. So, so he, no, he, he attacks after he plays him again. It's okay. Oh, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. He goes up to three after the um after the steal. I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. But um This is this is doable. I can. Half goblin half goblin warlock. <laughs> well. Well, I mean, it's looking dire again here though. I mean, how does he get out of this one? Top deck shadow plane, but now there's no shadow plane. I think this does spell the end, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I do believe so. There seems to be no way out of this. Yep. Yeah, so that's finally going to be it. I don't think there's any way for a shadow to get out of this one right here. Uh, the demon heart won't save him, so. Yeah, that's finally going to be it. Tom is going to be our first place finisher in the group once Shadow we finally realize that this is over. And uh, you can see the disappointment in his face right now. Finally realizing that this tournament is over. But, uh, I mean, going into it, we knew that it was an uphill battle going against Tom's three control decks. It sure was, yeah. I mean, I feel like Tom just had the better deck uh, selection overall. And, and Shadowy seems to have all of his weak decks for the third match. Well, it's been a long day, guys, and uh, in the end, it's going to be Tom finishing in first place and Kalento finishing in second place, uh, third and fourth. I'm not too sure. Both uh, Shadowy and Chao Shen finish, the, finish out one and two. And, uh, yeah, completely crazy day of games. And it just shows, you know, how, you know, insane things can get when people have to bring all nine decks. And in that particular instance, Shadowy just had the wrong end of that dice roll, bringing uh, these three 
you know, one combo-ish deck and uh, two aggressive decks against, you know, three control decks of Tom. You see on the screen there, Clento and Tom are going to be the ones who advance again to invited players. So thus far, the only qu Chinese qualifier who has made it on to the finals is Jay Shaw on day two. Tomorrow we're going to be seeing Dog, Bra Rose, Tice, and Kimmy in action. Looking forward to that, definitely. Just to uh, clarify, Shadow Weed did end up getting the third place and Chaosin ends up in the fourth place mm. of this group. The score of 5-7 and seven versus 6-6. Six, six. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we, we're definitely uh, uh, suffering after that one. It is a bit late here in Japan and it is a pretty crazy time in Europe after, you know, obviously having to wake up for you, Kaldi. And uh, you see the matches on the screen right there. Dog versus Brawl was first, then Tice and Kimmy after that. Uh, pretty good solid players from uh, in Kimmy and Brawl so you definitely not want to miss that. Hopefully they can put up a good fight versus Tice and Dog and maybe advance to the finals where it is a single elimination tournament and uh, works pretty similar to the round robin that you see right here. You have to play all nine decks in order to be able to finish out uh, and finish in first place. Now that is starting in 18 hours from now. I guess for those of you who aren't familiar with Chinese standard time. Uh, so, great matches. I mean, we had Thais, the third to fourth place finisher of BlizzCon this year. I mean, we also obviously have the third and fourth place finisher of BlizzCon last year, casting here at E2. Still going strong. Yep. Uh, we, I see in the chat, yeah, I need to just say here in Japan, yep, I do live in Japan, for those of you who are not aware. Uh, so, that is a true statement. I did not misspeak. And uh, yeah, but uh, obviously going to be looking forward to those games. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if you want to, again, watch catch the YouTube VODs, I will be uh, putting them on my channel on, uh, on YouTube. So hopefully you will go there and as we see the end credits on today's screen. So yeah, just to recap, it's going to be Kalento and Tom finishing out today and uh, getting to that final bracket. Thank you very much, Kaldi, for today. Any last words before we sign off? It's a pleasure. Looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, really excited to see what Dog and, and Thais bring and how the Chinese players face up against them. Uh, I guess to go over who's qualified so far. It's been Life Coach, Eloise, Firebat, Jaysia, Colento, and Tom. So, uh, yeah. Good night, I guess. All right. Thanks, guys. It's been a, been a long day, and thank you guys for watching. I, ho I hope you enjoyed the cast, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow.